it's not a septic tank? Okay. Yep. Because <clears throat> that's a whole different can of worms. Yeah, for sure. If you've ever wondered what a 200 amp residential underground electrical service looks like, today's the day. We've got precipitation, a balmy 34 degrees. I know we're gonna encounter some obstacles. Join us, let's rock. Well, we can bounce back here and take the place set apart and get rocking. At Jefferson Electric, when you're driving through the grass, you always have a spotter walk the site first. You roll down your window when you're backing up so you can hear audible, if someone says like, hey, watch out, or you know, it's just, there's protocol. You have a spotter, you walk the site, you roll down your window, and ultimately, the driver is responsible. If the driver needs to stop and assess the situation, you stop. Because a lot of times we're backing up trailers, you just, there's all kinds of situations. We've had pop tires, we've hit little, you know, retaining walls on the sides of driveways, and all that costs money to fix, and it's on us. Keep coming. <laughs> you have backup cams on all the trucks, but two at this point, two of the older ones. Keep coming. Almost there. Boom, Borfi. Today we're putting in a 200 amp underground service to this house. We're going to move everything that's in our way. No cutting, just taking apart, putting the bolts right back in the holes on that playset. Get all the paraphernalia out of the yard. If it looks like trash, you can put it in this pile right here, of driveway and whatever that is. And if it looks like homeowner stuff, I'd say let's go ahead and put it against this fence with the satellite dish or up in the playhouse works too, but we're gonna clear that path. We're gonna come right through here. 811 has already been marked. We're gonna see what obstacles we have, but we have three flags there. It looks like it's okay. We're gonna take off that f section of fencing and pull it out of our way. Um, and then we're also probably gonna have to cut that bushy tree um, so that there's a clear path to the pole. So that's the major goal for today is dig up the yard, mount the service equipment on the outside of the house, and then, uh, I didn't see any wire. Did you see, did we pull any? Um, I think they said it was in here already. It's inside. Uh, okay, cool. Well, he, they said something about don't turn nothing on. Don't turn nothing on. That's what they said, I don't nice. know. <laughs> we, we actually won't be energizing this service today. Okay. We'll just be putting <laughs> in the infrastructure and calling the AES guys. So that's it. We're anticipating putting the, uh, service equipment right here in the middle yep. so we're off the windows well I think we can fit them both right there Great. so we'll come up we'll hit one two back down into the crawl that's it perfect and then the cutover obviously is not today I'm calling AES subcontractor to get the wire in the conduit mm -hmm. and then AES will come out build the riser and we'll do the cutover but that's you know their schedule probably yep. Yep. It's two to four sub weeks subject to them <laughs> yep so that's that's our goal for today great i love it the final uh, grading will probably be rough just because it looks like you got some landscaping to do out here at the yeah, end yeah we're waiting for you and then we're i'm sorry this pile of dirt's in your way that's okay uh, can you give me a number for running some one inch in here for information wire yes we will put that in today and um Really, it's probably 100 bucks in material and 100 bucks in labor, 200. Fine. Cool. Perfect, appreciate it. Yeah, I just, uh, I always forget, and then it's all buried up, and I'm like, yeah. oh, We try to do it every time, but uh -huh. it doesn't always happen. Yeah, 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 try to think ahead. Yep, that's good. A homeowner mentioned, Tim mentioned that this morning. Excellent, oh, did you meet Tim? I did. He's, the guy is so grounded. Yeah. So down to earth, I love that. Yeah. Yep. Keeps it chill. Mm -hmm. This portion of the playground we moved out of the way and we have one fence panel removed to get us access to the utility pole. We need to add a sweep 90 because of the size of the wire to both ends for it to round down underground and then round slowly back up to the meter. But we're gonna run down the pole through the sweep 90. We'll trench out all of this. Do, 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 do. And we're gonna put the panel hopefully nice and centered between these two windows. 
and we've got our meter base and our trailer panel ready to go there. Our other Sweep 90s on the corner of the house. We've got our grounding wires and other things. We do need to make an equipment run for some of the other wire, which we were previously told was on site, but it's not. So we got a warehouse guy coming out soon. So we've got all kinds of buried data comm back here. Uh, it looks like fiber and uh, coax going that way and that way. So, uh, but if I had to guess, this is the one that's live to our customer. So I think we've got three outdated cable mediums. I'm just gonna pull them up a little bit further. Um, <clears throat> stuff can get into your chin trencher chain. You don't want that. Man, it's <laughs> like four inches below the surface. I'm sure that's how they taught them in school to install this stuff. Watch your follow through, Stefan. Cool, if the machine is bogging down, go ahead and back it off. You know, if it's bucking and kicking, explore what's happening. We might need to dislodge, you know, cut a root, dislodge a stone manually before we get that trencher back in there. And we need 36 inches of cover above our pipe. That means 36 inches of dirt on top of the pipe. And so, um, have like a tape measure or we'll put a mark on one of those uh, shovels so you can just check as you go and make sure you're maintaining the proper depth. So we're gonna hand dig right here uh, along our trench path because we've got two circuits that pop out to the garage there. We can see them, they're exposed here along the foundation of the house uh, when the masons, concrete guys, do the foundation. We've got them right here and we have no idea where they go from there but we know that there is a good chance that they're in our way. So we're gonna hand dig to expose it, try to prevent a repair. Worst comes to worst, we slice right through them. Guess what? We go get a splice kit, use the heat shrink, the jelly fields, you know, and we do an underground rated splice kit and we fix it. But we'd like to prevent that if we can. Aha, uh -huh, and it looks like it's undamaged as well. Good, good. Okay, so now the question is, can we get around it? And where's the other one? Oh. Probably in the same trench. So maybe just confirm that. It's time to get this unboxed. You know, I like these kinds of jobs. I'm just gonna break down some things for you. We've got videos for days on stuff like this, but man, if this is your first time, this is your first vid, this is a 200 amp residential underground electrical service. And this is just like the, the backbone, the bread and butter of the electrical industry right here. So when you're already overhead, and the customer elects in our jurisdiction to go underground, then that will incur a fee from the electric utility company. It's a $600 fee to go from overhead to underground because it's not maintenance. Maintenance is, is free, but an improvement, a customer elected improvement, that incurs a cost. In addition to that, they've got the entire cost of what we're doing today. And what we're doing today is typically for a home like this for 200 amps, between $4,000 and $6,000. We do have a contingency written into our trench that underground, unforeseen obstacles will incur additional charges. There's no way for us to know what's under here. If we've got evidence, if we've got a big stump, we know the root ball is gonna be massive. You know, if it's a 100-year-old walnut tree that's been cut down, but at this point, the trench path looks clear. We're doing due diligence to identify the wires, potholing along the way so we can avoid that. We've 811 marked the area. We don't do a private utility locate unless there's something that tips us over to um, incentivize that because it's usually a private utility locate. The 811, the public locate of utility mains, that's free, but the private locates are between $250 and $850 depending on who you're hiring. And so, um, you know, and they can't, locate plastic pipe like uh, irrigation pipe that stuff if you don't have an irrigation map we're just going to slice it and it's going to have to be fixed that's how that works and uh, but that conversation who owns that expense has to take place up front right every job every single job is a relationship there are expectations on the table and if you don't talk it through and flesh it out 
then I'm gonna say four times out of ten, someone's getting their feelings hurt. <laughs> and usually it comes down to money. So uh, you gotta just be conversational, talk through the situation, have a good solid contract in place, and then pick up the pieces when stuff happens, you know? So this is our meter cabinet. This is a Milbag 200. This is our main disconnect. I've got a breaker that goes in that main disconnect. I've folded out my cardboard because I'm going to be down on my knees in this cold weather. So I've got a little workstation here. Um, I'm a young guy. Probably once I get older, I'll bring a table out. We've got a canopy just in case the precipitation uh, decides to join us. Um, but I love this. I'm just going to mechanically execute um, assembling the work. There are a ton of utility requirements. I'm going to share with you the AES gold book page that's most relevant for this job. We're going to do a screen share on Company Cam, which is a beautiful app, the app that we use to organize our job photos. You know, the guys will start complaining based upon all the pictures that they take and have to take on all the job sites if you're cluttering their personal device. They're like, are you paying for my iCloud storage? No, 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 company cam. It's 12 bucks per user per month. We get unlimited storage, unlimited for both videos and pictures, unlimited number of projects, sharing. It's just beautiful. You can share with the customers, you can share and tag internally. It's simple, it is the simplest app that we have ever implemented at Jefferson Electric and it is invaluable. So if you're a contractor and you're not using company cam and you need to organize one of the most critical pieces of information, job site photos, company cam is your best friend. It's my best friend. Well, my wife is my best friend. Company cam, number two. Man, this disconnect, I am not, <laughs> not impressed. It comes completely disassembled. Like what is with this? I have to put every little part and piece together. Goofy, hello. I'm putting the screws in so I don't lose them. Take the cover off so it's not in my way as I'm mounting the equipment. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Have you tried going to the left of it yet? Or the right of it? Not on this side. We don't have a lot of uh ability to vary our trench because we're dropping four inch PVC pipe in there and that stuff just doesn't really bend. <sighs> Dang, well, I'd be, uh, I'd be up for going to the right. What if we drop our blade right here and explore again? And it, I do have some 22s and 45s. Hello? Mucho. Mm -hmm. Wow, what is that? It's weird. Yeah. You try. We try going on this side now. Let's yeah. Maybe. Bring it as, over as far as you can. Cut right here. Uh -huh. Let's, uh. No, yeah. say. We're gonna, we're gonna at least try this side just a little bit and see if it'll go. Yeah. Yeah, even bring it over this far because if we need to go straight and then hit a 22 and hit another 22, we've got couplings and parts for that. Okay. We have a maximum of 270 degrees of bends. Remember these metrics, Stephen. 270 degrees of bends from here to there. And that counts to 90s. It's an easy job if the trench doesn't beat us to a pulp. <laughs> a two, this is the 200 amp disconnect and normally we would not have all this assembly work to do. This is goofy. I don't know why the main breaker is not pre-installed. I actually I already slacked the team this morning and said, guys, can we make it a standard pro practice to have 200 amp exterior trailer panels instead of disconnects? And the reason I like that is because hmm, with a trailer panel, you get a main breaker, you get a set of pass-through lugs, but you also get an 816 breaker panel board in the center. So you can put eight breakers, total of 16 circuits in the middle of your disconnect. So you've accomplished the code purpose of an emergency disconnect, a main exterior on off, but you also have obtained circuit capacity. So next time you need to add lights for landscape lighting, patio deck, uh, electric vehicle charging, security lights, whatever, any exterior use, you've got it right here and you don't have to go inside and fill up your main breaker panel board. Um, 
your, your, sorry, your panel board on the interior. So I just, I just think it's a plus and it's only a few extra bucks. That was my bid to the guys this morning. Please, can we just make that a standard? Okay, there it is. Neutrals and grounds are common. So I am installing the green bonding screw between the neutral and ground bus here. And so this green screw is gonna bond the cabinet to neutral and ground. And that is required since this is the first means of disconnect. Boom. I'm going to, I'm gonna install a hub on top of this disconnect. The reason for that is I'm gonna install the disconnect lower than the meter cabinet. I just like to keep the electrical equipment as low, in a situation like this, as low and discreet as code will allow. And so my top of my meter is gonna be at about five feet above finished grade. And then this disconnect is gonna be below and just to the side of that as opposed to immediately next to it. For your hubs, you need to purchase a hub. There's so many different kinds. Purchase a hub that's compatible with your piece of equipment. So, Millbank meter hub is one thing, but a Squarity QO hub is another thing. Nolox is no aluminum oxidation compound. It is rust inhibitor. And so, after, without Nolox, after just a short while, these screws would not be serviceable anymore. They'd be seized in there. With no locks, you've got the ability to pull stuff back apart. So these screws on the side are gonna get no locks when I put them back in. Every ferrous outdoor metal connection, threaded connection, gets no locks. I just put it everywhere. Okay, that one's prepped. Let's prep the next one. So if this was an overhead service, there would be a two inch hub on the top of this, but in, instead there's a closer plate. And my closer plate is here. Um, I don't think it usually comes with this little gasket. It's nifty. Look at that little guy. Just a little extra weatherproofing. Okay. Now to finish prepping the cabinet. <clears throat> take your small flathead screwdriver and your portable onboard pliers. Make sure you're not pounding on the hinge side. This is the flat. And just knock these out. Those are the mounting holes. Flip your cabinet over, pull the slugs out, all right now I've got a decision to make. I think that's what I'm going to do guys, decision made. I'm gonna mount this equipment on the building just like this. So my main conduit's gonna come in here on my left side, which is closer to my trench. Left side, so this will be a two inch knockout, this will be a two and a half inch knockout, and that is all determined by codes and standards. Don't need to make any of that up myself. Back to the portable onboard hammer. Two inch knockout. Is, is actually, actually measures two and three eighths. You gotta be careful you don't knock out that outside rim. This is a set of concentric knockouts. Concentric means they all share the same center, if I'm not mistaken. Eccentric would be when the center of each circle is different. Essentially they share a common back point, but these share a common center point. So. This is my two and a half inch, which means I'm gonna knock out all the rings. 
And to do that, sometimes it's really tough. Sometimes you gotta just wham and wail and work it. I and mean, occasionally a knockout like this will take you 20 minutes to get out. It's crazy and, and sometimes they just fall out. Um, Milbank does a nice job with their knockouts. I don't want to bend up the cabinet. I don't want to scar the cabinet. That's one reason for having cardboard down. If I didn't, not only would I be in the mud, my electrical equipment would be in the mud and it wouldn't look good when I put it on the house. I'd be wiping it down. And then the other part of that is this enamel coating is very rust uh, resistant. However, as soon as you put one scratch in that coat, just with the tip of your screwdriver, you know, um, glancing off the surface, that's where it's going to rust. And you've got to, your product's not going to look good in two years, five years. You know, it should last 40 years. That's kind of the minimum life expectancy or, or the uh, guaranteed useful life for a basic electrical equipment like this. In my opinion, is about 40 years. After that, it requires a case-by-case -case evaluation to see if it's still serviceable, relevant. It does depend on what factors it's been exposed to, how hard it's been worked, its original quality, um, how the codes have changed, rendering it obsolete or otherwise. That wire is still running across here. So you see, if, if that's how deep we can go here. The concrete gets all the way from there to there. And then there's a big chunk here here to here but the rest of it the rest of it just keeps going um on the left side yeah and the other one you know we can we this one it was it was shallow on this side but like i said that one well do we want to move this stuff again and see if we can slice it further right, or do you think our best bet is further left? I mean, it's anyone's guess at this point. Huh? You can try left. Can't go more than this, but close to this. Shit. It might fit, maybe. We would only gain maybe get, a foot. You can, you're not gonna get that far, because we just did this trench here. So you're gonna be real close, so you're gonna probably be. Well, if we put some dirt over where we just trench. Yeah, what you're saying is we'd maybe get here, but yeah. that's about as far. As far as the wheels. Man, I don't think we have another good option than to move this and take it over further. What do you think? Yeah, and then how we're gonna do the bends. Yeah, we'll come straight off the pole and go that direction. Then we'll do one bend, go that direction. Then we'll correct it, mm -hmm. and we'll still be within. A wide, wide turn. Yeah, we need our angles to be straight right our runs to be straight but then when we'll hit a like a i'll see what it is i think it's a 22 degree bend uh, so we'll come probably from here uh-huh and then the rest once as soon as we get past it we turn and correct and we'll make sure we get that angle right we'll assemble the pipe on the ground and lay it down uh -huh. so we can see what that angle is and we'll just follow it let me, let me. a change order them and bring a mini x out here and many no it's not gonna it's not gonna no if we do, we gotta probably get a, uh, like I said, it's an excavator and try to break this concrete. Yeah, because, yeah, we gotta, we gotta break this concrete and the, the excavator's just gonna probably be doing the same thing, just looking for all the concrete that it's there. So I think it's a- I don't know if we could dig around it. Oh, you think it's a continuous pour, though, probably? Yeah, I think so. Feels pretty solid, huh? Yeah, because like I said, it keeps going there. And like I said, if we do a this one, too, we're going to do this one. This one, these two. And like I said, it starts from this side. Here is good. Whatever was here is fine from here to here. It's just this section. It's concrete. Let me do this. Let me talk to the homeowners and see if they have any intel about what used to be here. I have no idea how they, how long they were in this house, but if we've got any insight, that would help. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, we, there's no way we could do it from the top. Do it overhead? Yeah. You don't think it's the AS will come in? Because they look like there was power before there, no? Uh-huh. Yeah, they'd probably approve an overhead if we had to. That's going to be gonna be our next yeah because this is gonna take a while 
just trying to figure out the what's uh what's underneath here. Mm-hmm. And I think it's gonna be more costly too because you gotta rent two machines and then we gotta take all the concreto out. Mm-hmm. I'll put it in that pile. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, the thing is uh, how wide it is and how deep it is. We don't know. So if we break it, but it's gonna be, has to be pretty wide. Mm-hmm. To take the concrete. Oh, what do you think? We've got a decent amount of working room. What do you think if we get something bigger like a uh, Backo, something real powerful that's going to be, you know, I don't know what those are, 20 tons, mm -hmm. and we go at it that way, try to get underneath it and lift it, okay. dig around it, lift it. I mean, it definitely turns into a, quite the excavation project. Oh, yeah. We don't have a ton of room here. We'd have to get this out of here yeah. and hope that it doesn't go underneath the mini barn. Mm -hmm. And if it's that big, we're not going to move it anyways. No. Let me talk we to the homeowner. Still got to break it too. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, excavator's going to just remove all the dirt, but whatever's underneath, we still got to break the concrete to take whatever we need or the space that we need. Mm -hmm. What about if it's wide? If it's not wide, it's good, you know, but what about if it keeps going and going? We still got to cut. Mm hmm. Jackhammer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's yeah, look at her. If you want to talk to the homeowner and see what they, what was here before. Yeah. So this sand, look. All this sand. So you think it's a uh, fill? When the going gets tough, uh, <laughs> the boys make for home. <laughs> well, however, we're not quite at that point. So we're gonna pop inside, talk to the homeowner, and we're gonna find out. We're gonna make sure we've got total clarity here, right? What we've encountered is an underground, unforeseen obstacle. This is an additional expense on the job if you wanna get through it. We can get through it but we don't know what that expense is. I can tell you right now, it's probably between one and $3,000. And so we've got to have that conversation. I'm going to ask the homeowner if they've got any intel on what's underground. I'm going to talk to the general contractor. I'm going to get everybody on the same page, manage those expectations, and then we'll go from there. Maybe we convert to an overhead service. Maybe underground isn't that important to them. Maybe underground is penultimate. I don't know. Let's go find out. So in the backyard, between the play set and the um, mini barn, we can walk out there and look at it. We have are encountered poured concrete that's in the path of that underground service. Uh, it might be ancient. There used to be some on the core river here. A garage or pool. So that was... Uh, that was a little pond thing. Uh, water feature. I think it was a long time ago, long before we were here. Yeah, I didn't know if you had any... Where is it? I'm, I, I just, the only thing I've ever noticed is if uh, dirt gets brushed off of it, it's, it's like a, a ring. Ring. I, I saw something curved. Point. I didn't think of that. I don't know. Okay. Well, that's, that's good. I mean, if it's like a, if it was a structure, like a garage, you know, we're expecting poured concrete 36 inches deep uh, and no, no. Real, something really I robust. Can't I can't, no, no, no. no. There was never a structure there or okay. anything of substance, weight bearing that I'm aware of. Good. That's a huge plus. Now, there is a fiber cable on the ground that you might have seen coming down from the um, pole out there. Yep. It's strung along the side of the shed. The yes. Yeah. We've got one that's yeah. dead and gone that's who, that we cut out of there and one that's up and protected. Yeah, yeah that needs to obviously stay. Stay. Yeah. <laughs> My grandson might not be too happy. So. Yep. Uh, there's uh, like water, um, oxygen, and internet is just right below all that. It's, I don't know about third, but yeah. it's there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, good. That's that's um, positive. I'll call Eric and make sure we have a plan to get through that. Uh, but my next question, follow-up question, was just going to be: um, if we need to take that service overhead, is that an option, or do we want to fight and incur the additional cost of getting through that and keeping it underground? We need to know what the cost is. I mean, okay. Obviously, it's preferable to get it underground for a wide variety of different reasons. So, yeah. Depends on the cost. Again, I'm not aware that it's anything major in terms of the structure, but. Yeah, if it's a little water feature, that's great news. Uh, yeah, we, we could, 
our, our trencher won't go through that and it would take forever by hand, but if we can get a mini excavator out here and pop that thing up and out or break it, that would be our next next step. So, I mean, there's no way to go around. You don't know how large it was. wasn't there large inside. We took it as far right and as far left as we could. And obviously the trencher with the wheels, we're not gonna get within, you know, closer than two feet to the mini barn or to the play set. And we've got a maximum number of bends that we can have in that trench. Um, so essentially one 90 degree turn is all we're allowed. Um, so we can't, you know, zigzag around the yard. So uh, I'll, I'll call Eric, make sure we're on the same page and see about getting that thing out of there. But that's helpful. Okay. A little water feature as opposed to two story carriage house. Water feature. Good. I can't imagine it's got much concrete there. But Good. I appreciate that. Okay. Thanks for your time, Tim. Okay, so a concrete ring and we need to pop that out of the ground. So I'm thinking a uh, probably the largest excavator you've got. You um, so my first conversation is with you to get pricing and availability. Second is with the contractor to get it approved, uh, change order approved, um, and then I'll call you back. But uh, biggest excavator you've got, um, is it available today? And what's my all-in cost for the unit all day? Well, let's say four hours with a delivery to the job site approximately 25 minutes from where you are. Okay. Delivery and pickup. You're sure it's not a septic tank? We are, yes. Thank you. You are sure it's not a septic tank? Okay. Yep. Because <clears throat> that's a whole different can of worms. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so it might be like a cistern or something? Uh, I, when you say the biggest machine we've got, I mean, um, are you hoping that you're going to be able to just break it with the bucket on the machine or are you it's like um a little six foot round pond without a bottom on it just a decorative water feature piece and so it's not structural it might be precast or something of that nature and so i'm hoping i can possibly dig around it and lift it up out of the ground and set it aside. Oh, okay. And pull the whole thing out. Okay. Mm -hmm. The day rate isn't all that much more than the four hour rate and it, it gives you more time <laughs> if you run into issues. I'll, let me quote it both ways for you. Um, a, a four hour rate uh, for the excavator uh, pickup delivery tax is 503.17 and then you'll have a little bit of fuel you know on that um, your day rate is 602.41 okay great and then uh, delivery is 75 bucks an hour each direction for... Well, the delivery is the, the delivery is included in that price that oh, okay. I gave you. That's that... included in the price. Great. But the, the delivery is 96 an hour, so I'm charging an hour to deliver, an hour to pick up. Nice. So you, you pay for, you know, the... When it's a half hour, you pay for us to get there and back. Um, on the trailer items so i've built it so the the bait the rent of the excavator is 371 and then you got 96 to deliver 96 to pick up a 39.41 tax this is back to the day rate and then you know you're gonna burn your fuels you're gonna burn you're gonna fuel's gonna be 10 bucks an hour okay Nice. Less than that, that you actually use it, you know, so. Right. You know, you might, you might throw a little bit of money in there for some fuel. Okay, hey, that's what I needed, really appreciate it. If we can get this approved, we'll give you a call back. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this in, a, in this kind of like a reservation or something, uh, just so we have it all on paper. Do you, I mean, if it happens, it's probably gonna happen the next day or so. Yeah, I'll give you a call back probably in, within 30 minutes. Within, okay, so it's gonna happen, okay. All right, well, I'll hang on to all this, so I got it. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, thank you, Joel. All right, bye. Bye. Okay. We've encountered a bunch of concrete in the backyard. 
and we need approval to rent an excavator and incur approximately $850 in additional costs to get through this. I'm going to say $850 to $1,000 because we don't know approximately and then give a range. Okay. Uh, we'll just keep doing what we're doing. We've got the uh, puzzle pieces, I think, put together here. We just need a yes. While we wait for approval, we're going to get this service equipment moving along here. And we always use a little bit of fill, right? A nice, high quality outdoor sealant to prevent water infiltration to our holes. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> go ahead and put it in all my mounting holes. That's gonna prevent water from infiltrating into my house and my equipment. I'm gonna use four to six. Nice, heavy duty, excellent strength. Spax screws, I really like the grab. I'm getting on this equipment. Sorry, on the uh, <clears throat> hardy siding. And then I'll take the one screw that's already in that I put in there just to hold everything for me. I'll pull it back out. And put the sealant in there. Boom. I'll use this screw to be my applicator, keep this stuff off me and my gloves. I like where the bit is one piece and it uh, stays in place and I don't lose the tip. So this is how I like to do things here. Like, again, like I said, keeping my electrical equipment low. Um, I'm using a offset nipple. I'm even just gonna, you know, it's gonna bring it left. I'm gonna clear my pipe, but it's gonna bring it left and keep it even that much more compact. I want a small footprint uh, just for aesthetic purposes. Before I knock out one of these two knockouts to enter the house here, um, there are a couple considerations. One, I'm gonna get my equipment in place so I know where it falls. Two, I've got a measurement and I always take my measurement that I'm transferring from the inside to the outside off finished glass. So what that means is the bottom of the subfloor inside is 20 inches from the bottom of glass and so when i penetrate the house i'm going to use an exploratory bit that's going to be a small quarter inch pilot hole in there to make sure i'm clear of framing members obstructions i'm going to go slow and easy i don't want to hit plumbing i don't want to hit hvac gas lines and so a small pilot hole very gentle pressure nice clean cut more than 20 inches below finished glass is going to be my point. But first, I'm going to get my service equipment in here and then I'll determine which of two knockouts to pop out. If there is something more in the way, I could even come out of uh, the, the right side of the equipment here. Left side will be occupied, but right side will be available. So that's my thought process. This is within AES Goldbook spec. This is high enough and low enough to meet National Electrical Code. And then I've got three options on where and how to penetrate into the crawl space. So, lots of flexibility, the proper sequence. That was one of the most intimidating things when I started doing service equipment as an apprentice, is just getting the proper sequence so that I don't have a gotcha halfway through the job and have to pull stuff off and I've got holes in the house. Like, it's just, a little bit intimidating when you're getting started doing it on your own. One thing that's nice about using this fitting here, which is an offset nipple, is you've got variability. If this concentric knockout doesn't match up with this hub, you just pivot it, twist it, and it's going to give you that depth adjustment. This hub is nice in that, unlike most hubs, it actually has a nice about three-eighths of an inch depth adjustment as well. So I've got, you know, the, the right fittings really promote the versatility that you need to tackle the job. If this was like a brick or a stone veneer, you might have more variation than just this nice smooth mounting surface I've got today. All right, so we always use our 
are level. Always put your level on the long side of the equipment. At the back, the front could have a little bit more variation in it. So long side at the back. I'm ready to keep rocking. Let's put a sealant in here. So you gotta do what you gotta do, right? We've been tentatively approved for a thousand dollar change order to get the concrete out of the way. We think that would take care of it. But uh, until that formal approval comes through, we're gonna trench what we can up to the obstruction. You've gotta make sure you don't go too far because your other piece of equipment is gonna have to have a place to land. And if you cross your trench, it'll collapse. So we've got this wire exposed. We get it pulled out of the way. We hand dig up here. We get up to our obstruction and uh, do everything we can, everything we can to keep the job moving. And we've got, go ahead with the rental, we've got approval. All right, let's get it out here. Perfect. All right. Going that way. Hey, we'll see you soon, thanks. All right, thank you. Bye. Man, these guys are just so good. We love having our go-to rental store. You know what, they, they go above and beyond. They take care of us. We never ever are dishonest or cheat them and they are never ever dishonest or cheat us. You know, that's the kind of relationship you wanna have. Your vendors are just as important as your customers. So if there's an ethic that you have, and there should be, with which you treat your customers, apply that same ethic to your vendors, man. Take care of them. Those are the guys that are there. Not just a job, but job after job after job after job. I think we're gonna have four pieces of equipment out on rent from them today, and they're making it happen for we Four jobs, well three, two, two pieces of equipment here. Three distinct jobs, probably totaling just that the aspect of the job that their rental equipment is gonna help us execute, probably totaling around fifteen to $20,000 just for the work today that they're facilitating. And that's key, you know, if something breaks down, gets stuck, um, the reliability knowing that they're gonna show up. A piece of equipment is gonna be sitting on the job ready to go. That's significant, right? Opportunity, not just the cost of the equipment, but the opportunity cost of not having that equipment. They're working, functional, ready to go. The relationships are huge. Treat your vendors like pure gold because they are. That's my subfloor. I'd like to be just below that. I was going to use this as ground rod as a as a level, but I don't uh, I don't need that. I'm just going to come in low. It's probably probably just an LB on the bottom of that. Hopefully, I'm not a, like an inch to in, inch off where I'd like to be. Hey, if you guys haven't seen this before, this is our portable parts tote, right? So most of the fittings on this job, the underground is four inch as required by the utility. Four inch schedule 40 PVC. When we transition to above grade, we're gonna use this swedge adapter and go from four inch to two and a half inch schedule 80 because it's above grade and it's an unprotected utility conductor. And then after that, we're gonna go with two inch down and into the house. So this is our two inch parts tote and we've got a whole bunch of stuff. Take a look. It saves time. Our estimators don't have to pencil out each material component they know the tote is stocked according to a standard it's ready to go now you're only going to have three or four of these lbs in the tote so if you need multiple specify that and get some extras but the tote we've got like probably four two inch totes that are stocked and ready to go and we have them for every size of pvc from half inch up through two and a half inch they're a lifesaver that right there my friends is a perfect example of a concentric knockout there's a common center point for all the various circles. It goes from three quarter inch in the center up to two and a half inch on the outside ring. This is a perfect example of an eccentric knockout where the back point is the same for each of these or very nearly so and the center point is what varies. So we've got our terminology straight here and if I'm not straight, comment in the comments, right? And we'll talk about it. Okay guys, Moment of truth, so our LB is gonna hang down right on the bottom of this box, and I'm gonna penetrate the house here with my 
uh, 3 16 exploratory bit and see if there's anything in the way. We're in. And put it in reverse, just so I'm not less likely to penetrate something if I hit it. All right. <clears throat> now I'm gonna do a, a due diligence crawl through the crawl space, and I'm gonna do two things while I'm down there because I only want to go down once. I'm gonna get a foot length on the wire that's going from the load side of the disconnect to the panel, and I'm going to make sure there are no obstructions here. So I'll take a flashlight and a tape measure, and that'll be my one trip in the crawl space for today. I mean, please. All right, let me take a, a moment and pause while we're here in the warmth and look at the company cam photos for this job. But here I go into the crawl space, which has an unconventional access point. Not a lot I can do about it. Thankfully, I'm a, a thin guy. Avoid putting weight right here, right? On the fragile points of the, uh, the sink front. That's where it's gonna wanna bright, break if it's gonna break. So I'm gonna stay off to the right here. Slither into that crawl space. I've got my shoes off. There's the wire. Maybe this will give me a clue as to where that hidden electrical panel is. All right. Oh, goes up right there. There's a temporary outlet. It does not appear to be GFCI protected, may not be energized. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we will be able to terminate that today. That's great. Oh, plenty of wire left behind. It's always a problem. Too much scrap wire to figure out what to do with. Now I need to orient myself. I do not see the bit. Oh, there it is. That's why you get a long bit to get past all that spray foam. Which I love spray foam, but it's just a little harder to work with. All right, so I'm close to the joist. That's a consideration there. Um, but it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna clear it because that's a, the approximate center of my hole and um, it's only gonna be a three inch hole. But the actual wire has about an inch and a half OD. So I'm gonna be fine. I'm not even gonna eat into that joist and then the wire will stick around it. Okay, mission accomplished. See ya! Crawl spaces, there's no good way to get out. Getting in is hard enough. Getting out is just awkward. They say comfort is a slow death. Uh, and this is uncomfortable, so I think I'm in a great place. Back to work. What I learned was we already have the wire going into the house. In fact, it's it's down in the crawl space, so I'm gonna have to make another trip or Tim or Stefan or you know, something like that. As the uh, old saying goes, master to apprentice, would you like to go in the crawl space or would you prefer that I stay up here? <laughs> the only correct answer is yes, sir. So, uh, we learned that the, uh, we think the electrical panel is upstairs. We don't really need to see that. We've got the wire hanging tight for us. They said it's in the house. We're like, we don't see the wire in the house. Well, it's in the house, in the crawl space of the house. And we have found the wire. So speeding along here, uh, I think the really only issue we have is this trench. Everything else should wrap nicely. Blade's pretty dull after cutting all that fencing and wood. and. I was in a crawl space yesterday 
looking at a uh, hole in a pipe that uh, we had caused 18 months ago. There's a very slow leak in the crawl space. The reason it was identified is because of uh, the smell. And it, it was spray foamed in, both the pipe, the wires was real tight up in the very corner of a crawl space. And uh, moral of the story is drill slowly, cautiously, explore, clear the plug, take your time, see what you're up against. Uh, so we've got a plumber out there probably like uh, in about two hours to fix that for the homeowner. Now, uh, we've got the LB in. I'm gonna screw it and cock it, but I won't cock it till we're done because it's gonna get some manipulation. Tim's inside and he's gonna take that wire we saw and he's gonna shove it out here. Good for Tim. And then it's gonna be a beast to get through that LB. An absolute beast. No fun for anyone. There it comes. We're gonna have a ton extra. I tend to not be very cautious when it comes to wire lengths. And so, oh, sorry about that. So, how much wire we're gonna have here is just beyond. <laughs> it's already a lot. Almost there, that's good news. That's it! Yeah, how much slack do I leave? Um, enough to make up a splice box if something ever happened to it, so let's say three feet. That? I like it. Thank you! All right, I'm just gonna put a mark on the wire so I know where it was and I don't... Yep. Coming right up. All right. I'm gonna have to use my large flathead screwdriver as a implement to get this cock in place in the harder to reach sections. As an electrician, you need to be careful when you're using paintable and unpaintable cock. I generally like the unpaintable stuff better because it's just, ah, oh, it's just vicious, you know, vicious good. But um, I just want to clear, just want a generic clear, goes on anything, keep it tight, don't, don't get messy. But sometimes you need that paintable so they can come back and make it pretty. Fact, man, this is the hardest part of the job right here. <laughs> Besides what you guys are doing, of course, <laughs> is trying to get these four conductors in a two inch LB. It's kind of just oh, yeah. stupid. <laughs> Yeah. Sweet! Not bad. Oh, it's too short. Just kidding, I know. <laughs> it's time for the duck seal! Quack, 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 quack. Here we go. Jam this in here. Take a half a brick of duck seal and just seal that baby up. Maybe a little less than half a break. Third. So what we're doing is we're uh, sealing up interior from exterior. We got it sealed around the conduit. We want it sealed inside as well. This is not the same kind of sealing you'd use for hazardous environments like uh, gas stations where you'd have flammable vapors. This is to prevent or reduce the likelihood of uh, moisture infiltration to the house. This is to prevent bugs. This is to prevent the loss of heat, uh, conditioned air from the home. It's just multi-purpose. I mean, the National Electrical Code doesn't care about heat loss, it doesn't care about bugs. But practically speaking, those are both relevant to the homeowners. Just pack it in there. 
You may have noticed the incorrect use of the word pentultimate, which actually means second to last. For instance, I got pentultimate in the 5K race. At this point, we have bought the farm, but the job is far from done. We've got that concrete obstacle in the backyard. If you want to stick around and watch the next video with the excavator shows up and we conquer that challenge and wrap this baby up, I've got a few more tidbits at the pro level, the business level, and the DIY level. Or if you're just a homeowner chilling out with us today, stick around. I got something for you too. And subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.